Hi, I'm Andy Beck. I'm an artist and photographer based here in Teesdale in the North Pennines of England. In this series of short films, I'm going to show you how I converted my Nissan NV200 into a camper van and mobile studio. The films show the various stages of the process. Now, I'm no expert, I've never converted one of these camper vans before, so there will be trials and errors in these films. I hope you get information and inspiration that you can adapt for yourself if you're thinking of converting not only a Nissan NV200, but any other sort of small camper van. Feel free to leave questions or your own ideas in the comments boxes below, and wherever necessary, I'll give you a reply as soon as I can. The whole of this conversion has cost me just over £1,100. So here you'll see what you can do for that sort of money. Here's the film. The next stage is looking at the flooring. I've looked at many different ways of uh, putting a floor in on the internet and everybody seems to have uh, come up with a, uh, a different ideas but basically on the same variation. How most people do it, it seems, is that in these little furrows on the, on the floor of the van, they bond in uh, small battens of wood, uh, which are obviously level, or to come level, with the ridges. Once that's dried, over the top can go a, uh, an insulation layer. Then on top of that would be a layer of plywood. A half inch ply or 12 mil ply uh, seems to be the, the way of doing it. And I'm going to do it so that the sheets of ply are going to be lengthways down the van. The carpet I'm going to use as a template for cutting the timber. The idea is to line both boards up exactly, nicely butted together, and then next job to do is to lay the carpet top side down and then lay it out flat and tape it in place with a bit of duct tape uh, to keep it nice and uh, positioned on the timber. Once I'm happy that that's perfectly aligned, smooth it out and secure it down. You only need a couple of bits of tape, it's just to hold it in place in case when you're going down there, you kick it and <coughs> you have to reline it again. But uh, no harm in putting the bits of tape just there and it also keeps the carpet nice and straight and tight. Now it's just a case of drawing around the outside and uh, marking out the shape of the carpet. And that's it. That's the outline that I need to cut round. And then the idea is, if you look underneath, to make sure that the timber supports are close to the cutting area, but not underneath. But they've been perfect for doing this sort of job.
that's the two floor sections cut out. Uh, I'll bring the van in and give them a, a test. So with a bit of tweaking, a little fine um, trimming, I've got the board to lay uh, in its right uh, location, nice and close up to the edges. And as I wanted, bang in the center of this furrow so it can screw onto the button that's gonna be bonded into there. So I'll just do the other side. Just a little bit of fine tuning off this back corner and at the top left hand, uh, top right hand side, and should be ready to roll. Look at that! Slotted perfectly into place, and then that would screw down so it's perfectly level across here. With the two floorboards roughly cut and fitted to shape, I now go on to doing some of the fine-tuned trimming uh, around the three doors. I plan to use the trims that came with the vehicle because they're good, they're hard wearing and uh, this one for instance serves a purpose in not only does it house the door catch but also the bolt for the uh, spare wheel which is underneath the vehicle. and then get the trim and now you can set it in place because there's no wood there to hold it back that's it that's great it's a nice edge down here and then a good shape around there look really good when it's finished so I'll go up now and I'll do the two door entrances there and do basically the same as I've done here using the trim to mark out I'll get on with that The side door tr uh, trims are quite easy to um, use as a template. Uh, I've got those two done. Let's show you what I've done. And you can see in here, and I've left that area ready to put the um, edging on. There'll be edging down the front here as well, at the, the front edge. And you can see the same on the other side. I've just got a couple of those off cuts um, and place them underneath the end here and if I put my knee on there <coughs> put a knee in there you can see that there's no springiness in there at all whereas without it you know there's, there's a play in that so what I've done is just set them in loosely like that one on each side there and I'll mark round them cut them out put them to one side and they're ready to be bonded down into the floor of the van so that I can then screw down the very ends to give it that extra tight support um, when I come to the final fit of the floor. There's only one uh, bit of cutting I need to do on the floor. It's a fuel panel cover which is under this bit of ply. Now if I move it you'll see there's the panel. Now, I've spoken to a couple of people, including a, a mechanic at a garage, and saying that it's really uh, almost important that you leave this accessible, because it'd be very awkward to uh, reach the connectors, which are directly underneath this panel, um, if you cover it up. Uh, I'll just get the screwdriver, and just show you what I mean. Now, I've seen YouTube films of uh, uh, camper conversions of uh, these MV200s and I've seen people putting floors in and I've seen the conversions finished but <clears throat> I haven't seen anyone leaving this accessible. Well, 
maybe I've missed something or maybe people just don't do it because if you if you did a full camper conversion normally your sink and uh, cooker unit would be fixed to here I'm not technical but I would imagine there's the fuel pump and the connector uh, for the pump on top of the tank if you've done a full conversion and this is completely covered over and you've got your fitted cupboards uh, here or in this area how would you get to that so it would be a real pain for someone to do and it could cost a bit of money well what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a square section out of that piece of ply directly over this and then screw the square access panel wooden access panel down onto the battens so that that can be released and then this can be accessed that means of course that the vinyl is on top of that well what I plan on doing is I'm not going to stick down all of the vinyl what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick down all of the vinyl past there backwards and I'm going to leave this bit so that if someone wanted to access this panel they can just lift up the vinyl open the wooden access panel open this and they've got to the fuel tank I don't plan to have a fitted cooker or a fitted unit here so uh, that's easier for me to do but it's something to consider if you're thinking of uh, uh, making the conversion and putting a floor down in this MV200 so I'll get on and do that and I'll show you the finished um, panel well that's the uh, the whole cut um, to give access to the fuel pump panel and I've made this um, cover which if I just place it on the buttons it'll sit in there and that will get screwed down at three points um, to make it nice and level with the, uh, the floor underneath the vinyl which will be able to be peeled back unscrew this unscrew the, the uh, tin plate and you'll be able to get access to the fuel pump hopefully I won't need it but touch wood well that's the floor finished in its preliminary cut the next job would to make the battens which will go in the furrows of the van floor those will then be bonded onto the floor and this will be screwed onto those battens today I've come back to do some work on the floor the observant will notice that the passenger seat is now back in that's because I've had to take um, a, a day or two off from doing the floor so that I could fit the swivel seat with my friend Ian that's now in that's uh, all been filmed and that's a, a different film on my channel that you can go and see about how to fit the swivel seat but uh, back to talking about the floor so the uh, the timber the plywood has been cut out to shape and the panel for the the fuel pump has been done so I'm going to take out the floor and cut the battens and today's the day that I bond the battens down onto the floor so that uh, I have something to screw down uh, through the top layer and uh, secure the the final floor so I'll get on and do that one thing that I have found as an advantage, and it was a bit of a fluke, is that when I cut the two pieces of timber and did them lengthways as opposed to crossways, which an awful lot of people do, I found that this system means that in a unit like this, it's dead easy to take the timber out, back, lay it back on the workshop floor, do a bit of trimming, cutting, put it back in, and it's very easy. If I'd done it that way, uh, I think it would be much more difficult to lift it out and uh, avoid bashing the side of, the, of the, the van itself or taking it out through the side door. I wouldn't have room here. So this method has proven to have a couple of advantages. So I'll take the floor out and explain to you about the, the battens for the floor and how I'm going to bond them down onto the framework uh, or the, the, the floor of the van. When I've removed the fittings for the uh, seats, the, the plate that goes across, in fact it went across here 
and then some of the brackets uh, that the seats attach to I had to remove the bolts now my intention is to sell those bolts and all part of the kit um, when I sell the, the, the seats and the fittings so they'll go with the, uh, the units so I'm left here with some holes in the uh, floor of the vehicle um, a line across here some at the back and then some here at the front where the uh, middle row of seats were now I've had a look underneath and some of these holes that go down this is in the uh, box frame of the of the chassis so these bolts don't actually go through to the uh, the ground um, so there's no chance of water coming up and uh, causing any damage through those but what I am going to do on these ones and it's the same with this back row uh, here is I'm going to fit grommets I'm going to put some sealant and bonding in there and then put some grommets on the top to keep that nice and flush uh, so I can put the battens across for when I fix the floor uh, but these at the front here uh, they do go down into nothing so I'm going to get some bolts and fit those in and uh, they will stop any water ingress coming up from below there's also the two holes here where the seat bolts were fixed to the wheel arch so I'm going to get bolts there as well and fit those in there'll be a bit of a bump when I put the carpet on but uh, that'll be okay to fix the floor to the van itself I'm first going to get some strips of wood which I'll use uh, the offcuts of the ply that I've got and I cut those into uh, the widths of the, the base of the furrow and I will bond those into the um, the furrow and leave them to dry overnight I'll be using this bonding agent uh, bonding sealant this, this one's uh, from a company called Verth and I was uh, given this by a conversion company that's what they used so I'll use that to bond these battens into all of these furrows along the length of the floor once that's dried over the top I'm going to lay a layer of uh, double backed insulation I was going to say foam but this is like a bubble wrap and that will go over the top over all the floor just lightly stuck down and then over the top of that I'll lay the floor the bits that I've already cut out and just as an example that will then go over the top and I'll be able to use 20 mil screws countersunk to screw down into the battens and secure the plywood floor throughout the whole of the rear of the van. Once that's all done and I'm happy with that and I'm ready to the vinyl will go on top and that will provide a nice sound floor throughout the whole of the back of the van. So it will only raise up the level of the floor by the 12 mil of the wood really and then the thickness of the vinyl so not too much. The first job then is to go and cut lots of lengths of batten ready to be bonded into the back of the van. So right first time, down to good measuring I think. So I'll carry on and cut the battens. Well I reckon this will be enough. But I'll take them out to the back of the van and uh, just check. I can always cut some more. They don't need to be tidy and sanded off because they're just going to go hidden out of sight, out of mind. They're not going to cause any uh, issues there. So they're pretty tidy and neat because of the sharpness of the blade. And I'll uh, go and take them for a test, see if I've got enough. That's all the buttons cut and um, measured for size and laid out loose on the van floor. You'll notice that there are some gaps here. This is where the brackets were for the, um, the seats and where I put grommets in. If I put pieces of wood over there it would just raise them up by a couple of mil and that would make the floor uneven. So I've left those and I'll register where those points are so I don't try and screw through um, and affixed to these uh, buttons. This 
uh, bonding agent, which I used earlier, doesn't go off straight away. It doesn't set um, straight away. It's best to be left overnight. But it does give you the opportunity to reposition things um, if you haven't got them in the right place uh, straight away before the glue has gone off. I'm going to start at the front and work my way back so I'm not disturbing the things that I've set down already. And uh, a long continuous strip of bonding agent underneath each one and work my way back and uh, should be straightforward and simple. Give each one a good press down and that ensures that the agent will spread right across the width of the back and across the floor giving a good contact and good adhesion. Okay, that's all the buttons glued in. Next, I'm going to bring the floor back on and get some heavy weights to give a bit of downward pressure and leave all the glue overnight to dry and come back in the morning and carry on the work. I'm very lucky that in the workshop here there are some oak timbers and they'll give a really good weight um, downward onto the, uh, the ply. You could use something like um, car batteries or breeze blocks or something. You just need that downward pressure to keep everything in place while the bonding agent sets. That should do it. Hopefully that short film will give you a good idea of how I completed that stage in the process of converting my Nissan NV200. Do check out my channel for the other films which show all the other stages of the conversion from start to finish. If you've enjoyed the film, do click the like button and hopefully you may feel inclined to even subscribe to this channel. You may also be interested in my other work, my proper work, my painting and photography. If so, do have a look at my website. The address is www.andybeckimages.co.uk. Thanks for watching.